Let me ask you this. Um, Bob Beckel has not stopped talking about the last time I interviewed you. And I said, how are you were out of politics, what, 12 years, 13 okay. years? Okay. And I asked you, how are you different today than you were when you were speaker? What are the differences? How have you changed? What, would you, what did you learn? What would you do that was similar? What, 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 what did you do on the positive side? <laughs> and what would you change in terms of your governing style? Well, I mean, there are a couple of different questions there. But first of all, I think I've changed in a lot of ways. I've had 12 years to think about what I did right and what I did wrong. I've had 12 years of running small businesses and learning a lot more about the market and about the responsibilities of providing jobs and meeting customers. And uh, I've had uh, 12 years of becoming a grandfather. I, mean, I, it's, I think it's very hard to exaggerate the impact uh, that Maggie and Robert have had on me, both in the sense of your grandchildren give you a much longer sense of time horizon, uh, and the degree to which I just love them, and we're, we're as you know, they're my two senior debate coaches. And, we have uh, we have a great time and we we stay in touch you know every day. Um, I have uh, the marriage with Callista has been fabulous and, and you know because you you've been with us uh, and that's really broadened and deepened and enriched my life in ways that I never understood. Uh, I'm, I'm even closer to my two daughters who I've worked with in a variety of things. Jackie, the younger one, has written two books now and Kathy's run a, a, a communications company and a creative agency. Uh, and their, their husbands are terrific. So I think as a family person, I slowed down over the last 12 years. I had the time, I had the ability to actually focus as a person rather than constantly being driven by public life and by, by public pressures. I think um, I'm also 68. And I think at 68, I'm probably calmer, a little bit slower and more careful. Uh, I, I remember saying to Bill Clinton when, when I first saw him in the White House, he was one of the smartest people I'd ever seen in the White House. The question was, how wise was he? And I think that's something I keep reminding myself. People say, oh, he's the smartest guy in the room. That's not, smart for presidents isn't enough. What you really want is somebody wise enough to avoid the really big mistakes and wise enough to focus on what really matters. And, and I think there, the, the fact that Clist and I have done movies about Ronald Reagan, about Pope John Paul II, has given us real insights into great leaders who were people who changed the world by the force of their moral beliefs and their ability to explain truth to people who really want to know the truth. You really, you're religious. You discovered religion in the last decade. Well, wrote, I've, you, I've you, always prayed, and I, I mean, yeah. it goes back to my grandmother, Doherty, who, when I was four, worked very hard to convince me that there was heaven and hell and was prepared to explain hell as vividly as needed for me to decide it was really something to avoid. My mother was uh, convinced I was headed there yeah, well, at one point. <laughs> my, my grandmother wanted to convince me that if I was leaning that way, she would show me this week yeah. what it would be like. And so, <laughs> so, I, so I had a long, I mean, I've always had in that sense a, a relationship with God. But I think that my, the process of being with Callista who sings in the Basilica Choir and the gradual uh, being surrounded by and becoming used to Catholicism and the power of the Eucharist uh, and going to Mass, I mean, that, that all had, did have enough. There's no question, it gave me a comfort zone and, and a feeling of reconciliation with God that was very real.